Hello and welcome to MyNG Connect. Today we're going to be walking through the World Cultures and Geography Texas Edition for teachers. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce you to all of the different components that are on this website and we should probably start with your carousel up at the top. Once you've logged in with your teacher username and password, you're going to be able to access everything you see on this screen. We'll start up here at the top with the book carousel, and the first thing that you should see are the correlations to the TEKS, both in student and in teacher formats. After that, simply by clicking on the right-hand side, you'll notice that you can access all of your other materials as well. The correlations to the ELPS for both student and teacher, as well as the book in English and in Spanish. Immediately following the book are the teacher's editions for the different areas of the world that you'll be studying. Simply by clicking on any of the teacher's editions or any of the books that you've just seen and finding the one that you'd like to use at that particular point, you can simply put your cursor on the book, click on it, and it will take you immediately into the teacher's edition. On the left hand side are some drop down menus that you can use as well once you're in the book. You can use the go to menu that allows you to go immediately to a particular area of the book or page of the book that you're trying to use. Once you've located that page you can use a single or double page layout of the book as well. It's your choice. There is another way to access the book immediately, and that's by typing in the page numbers down here below where you see the cursor. You can simply put in the page number and it will take you directly to the book at that time, or to the page at that time. What's nice about this format is that once you are in the book, there are various things that you can do. One of the things that you can do is use the highlighting option. The highlighting option is used by simply clicking on the highlighting pen, and then dragging and creating a box around the area that you would like to highlight. This is also very useful with using the virtual note-taking guide that you'll see immediately to the right. You can pick up the notes and type in whatever you would like to say about that particular section. And then once you have finished typing in your note, you simply can move by dragging and dropping that note anywhere you'd like on the page. So that, in a nutshell, is how to use those features up there at the top. Now, if you go back to your home screen, there are lots and lots of other things that you can do. For example, you can go into your interactive whiteboard activities. If you have an interactive whiteboard at school, you simply can go in by unit and you'll notice that by unit and actually by lesson you're able to pick up any of the smart board activities that are available for that chapter and for that lesson. On the right hand side you'll notice that there are two formats that we're able to use for these interactive whiteboard activities. Smart and Promethean Ready. So simply by downloading that capability is how you'll be able to access all of these different interactive whiteboard activities. Going back to the home page are all of my teacher resources directly to the right of the interactive whiteboard activities. When you click on that golden box, it will take you again by unit to all of the different chapters within the unit. What's nice about this is that all of your resources are in one place. You don't have to take these resources home with you in print form because they're available here um, on internet version. So what's great is you can literally go into your core content presentations, go into the different resources that are available for that unit. And when I go in, I can see that I have my geo videos, I have my Explorer video clips, I even have pictures. All of those things are available to me right at the ready for Unit 1, Chapter 1. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to go into the Geo video. I can preview the video right from here. 
and it tells me how long the video is. It's 2 minutes and 32 seconds. I can actually look at it full screen and with captions if I'd like. And then I have two options below it. I can add it to an assignment or I can add it to a lesson planner. This is particularly useful because if I have students who have not been able to come to class for the last couple of days and did not have a chance to preview the video as a class, I can add it to a specific individual assignment and when they log on, they'll see that that assignment is pending for them and they can open it right from there. So it's very useful that way. But notice that there are lots and lots of other resources here as well, including assessment options, both section quizzes in English and in Spanish, standardized text, test practice, and then of course vocabulary practice, both in English and in Spanish. So what you're looking at here is a complete review of all of the resources that are available, again, by unit, and then specifically by chapter, and then drilled down to the unit, or excuse me, to the lesson um, format. So unit, chapter, and then lesson. Directly below these two golden boxes are a lot of other activities that are available for you to use as part of whole group instruction um, in the classroom, including this interactive map tool. The interactive map tool allows you to create data layers of information with your students. And the way that this works is you literally, and I'm going to go ahead and maximize the screen so that you can see it a little bit better, but you would literally go into the region that you are studying, and let's say that we were studying Asia together, I could literally go into Asia and then to even a specific country if I wanted to, but in this particular case I'm not going to because I'd like you to see the totality of the region itself. But to the left of that, once I've picked the region that I'd like to study with my students, I can drill down to the different themes that we offer. For example, there are physical water systems and physical land systems that you can study with your students. For example, if you wanted to study perhaps earthquakes in the region. What it does when I click on earthquakes, and you'll probably notice here, is that it started to color code the map for me. And you'll notice that by using this um, representation here of how many earthquakes actually are distributed throughout the region by color, you'll notice that there are quite a few. Um, but what's great about this is that I can take that and actually layer it even with using surface maps like these climate physical system maps. So, for example, I want to see earthquakes and I want to see them represented um, during the summer months. And that's what you see here with the color coding and the temperatures that you'll see, the average temperatures in Asia during the summer months of June, July, and August. So what's great about this is that all of this, even human systems, population density maps, and human system maps that have to do with political and economic systems, and even environmental maps, when I click on that, I can click on you know, the human footprint, for example, in Asia, where human progress has been permanently altered. Um, around the world and specifically in a region by most impacted versus least impacted. All of this is being recorded. So you'll notice here that I have quite a few different themes going um, and you can save this and when you download it, you literally download it here where it says download this map and it is saved forever. So you have all of these different archived maps that you can save with your students or that students can save for you in projects and it makes it quite interactive and useful to use in class. So that in a nutshell is how to use the interactive map tool. Directly to the right of it is the digital library through National Geographic Learning. The digital library works in a very intuitive way. Basically you can select different ways to search for images. You can search for images by resource type, and you see when I've clicked on that, it leads me to all of these different options, whether I want to look for graphs or visual vocabulary or even musical selections. I can select it by unit, so literally just go into the, the selections that are available for South Asia. And let's do it that way. Let's just see what comes up for South Asia. 
but you see that I could even select by chapter and by lesson if I wanted to. I click Go, and 144 different unique items come up for just South Asia. For example, I have these photography pieces for the Taj Mahal. I have, um, you know, even the musical selections, and I have different map selections that come up, physical maps and political maps that come up. So what's great about this is that when you click on a particular photograph, like I have here, it gives you a brief description of the photograph, and then you can do different things with it. You can download it and use it any way you'd like, either as a poster or a photograph, a standalone photograph. You can add it to a lesson planner like you saw before, and even add it to an individual assignment. So you always have that choice with all of these different search uh, results that come up for you in the digital library. And again, you have quite a few. You have musical selections, photography pieces, um, and then of course the different maps themselves. Great, wonderful way to pick up pieces that deal specifically with the unit or the chapter that you are studying. Let's talk a little bit about the lesson planner. The lesson planner is under the teacher tools section and the lesson planner is also very intuitive to use. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a new lesson plan with you in, in a matter of seconds. By clicking on create new lesson plan and that would be the way that you would create new lesson plans for yourself. You would always give it a name. Today I'm going to name it Texas Sample Lesson and then give it a start date. So let's go ahead and give it the start date of September 7th so that you can see a full week of instruction. I'm going to select my unit and my chapter, Unit 1, Chapter 1, and click Continue. It always gives you an option here on how you want to create your lesson plans. On the left-hand side of the screen, it says choose a pre-made plan. Now, if you choose the pre-made plan, which 99% of the time you probably would want to, it will allow you to create plans that are automatically populated and then you would add or delete activities in that pre-made plan. So there's still a lot of editing that you can do if you choose the pre-made plan. If you choose on the right hand side where it says build your own plan, this is more of a customized approach where you would build the entire lesson plan yourself. You would literally go into the day and you would add activities from the add activities window um, one by one. This is more time consuming and this would be probably more of an option when you have maybe a substitute teacher coming in and you have very very specific objectives that you need to create for that person. So let's choose the pre-made plan because that's normally where we would go. Click continue and obviously we are on a year-long plan so we click save and it should tell me in just a moment that my lessons are ready. And let's see them. Here they are. So here are my lesson plans and notice that I've already put in holidays, so it skipped over Monday. Monday was a holiday at our school, so it skipped over that day. And if you put in all of your events and activities that are going to take children out of the classroom, your lesson plans will also skip over those holidays as well. So you can skip over, you know, winter break, spring break, those types of pre-planned activities or holidays that are are uh, non-changeable. So here are your lesson plans and just to click on one of the lesson plans you'll see the depth that is involved with one of these lesson plans. Um, it gives you a brief description of the lesson plan, a way to change the date up at the top if you need to, the duration, approximate duration of the plan, where it's found in the teacher's edition, and then of course the different TEAK standards that are correlated specifically for this lesson. If you need to print your plans, you can literally go to the Actions button and go down to Print Save Plans and you'll have the option to print it in a detailed view or in a more concise view. Now, once we have finished with the Teacher Tools Lesson Planner, let's go into the Teacher Tools Assessment piece. So the assessment piece, again, as you probably figured, is organized by unit. 
And what's nice about this is when I click on a particular unit, it pulls up all of the informal and formal assessment options that are available for that unit and chapter. So you'll notice here that I have standardized test practice and section quizzes, and then of course formal assessment A and B. I have them both in English and in Spanish as you see here, and of course all of the different quizzes by section. What's nice about this is that when I click on one, and I'll click on one for you here, I can just literally hit download, and here it is available for me at the ready. So these are obviously um, formats that cannot be changed. Um, they're already created for you, and so there's no way to edit them, but you do have them available for you anytime you need them. So again, I would go into assessment, I would click on the unit, and it would pull up all of the different uh, formal and informal assessment options that I need. Let's say, for example, that you are, and I'm again, I'm at the home page now, Let's say that you are looking for a specific correlation and that you're needing to cover. All of your TEKS and ELPS correlations with respect to world cultures and geography are going to be found here. What's nice about this is that you can browse by strand. You can browse by history, geography, economics, government, and so forth. So you literally would find the tab that you are looking for. Um, it's going to automatically default to TEKS unless you specifically um, click on the ELPS tab. And you can go into all of these different standards here. And it will show you by TEKS which, um, which standard is found where in the book, by page number, and even in the resource book for the teacher, and even in the assessment piece. Um, for all of the different TEKS that you will be covering in this class. So again, I was in Teacher Tools and I simply clicked on Correlations for that. Directly below those three important boxes are lots of other different ways to manage both assignments that you're giving out and different things that you're going to be doing with your classes. So when I click on Assignments, it takes me directly to the assignments page where I will be basically passing down assignments online. When I click on add assignment, I would give my assignment a name and then give it a brief description so that when the students log in, they will have a description ready for the assignment for them to do. Um, a start date, August 31st, excuse me, August 31st, and the due date, let's say, is September 7th or September 8th. Click Next. I have one student in my class. I would go to that one student, click Add, and now that student is going to have that assignment ready for them, this assignment right here, ready for them when they log in. This Assignments tab keeps track of all of the different assignment titles that you'll be giving throughout the year. Going back to the home page, directly next to the assignments are the core content presentations that you'll be not only using but building from when you're giving your lectures in class. Now, what's nice about this is that you have these different core content presentations by lesson. And what's great about it is when you click on the core content presentations, you can download them from the screen right here. So you'll notice that up here at the top, it's downloading my core content presentation. 